This week I thought it might be fun to dig up some footage that I shot years ago so that I can show you all of the mistakes that I made when colour grading it. Then I'm going to colour grade the old footage from scratch, showing you all of my newest colour tricks and techniques. So I've got three shots ranging from all right looking to really quite nasty and we're going to see how much I can improve them today. But first, since colour grading is all about precision, let me just sort out my workspace. Now LG got in touch recently offering to help with this video by sending me their new 32 inch ultra fine ergo monitor. I'm using the ergonomic stand that's included with the monitor so I can position the screen to avoid any reflections and make sure it's at the most comfortable angle. To complete my workspace I'll raise the monitor up to eye level so I can stand while I grade and get everything powered by and plugged into the monitor before finally turning the lights down low to simulate that cinema experience. So there we have a nice minimal setup and we can get into some grading. So this is the first shot that I'm going to do my best to fix. It's from a mini documentary I shot in 2014 with my brother and looking at this the footage seems very dark and grey. I think I remember what happened with this shot. I bet I took the original ungraded shot like this and dropped down the shadows and midtones to add contrast but when I tried to brighten the image I got a lot of nasty clipping. So my solution was to just leave it dark. So here's what I was able to come up with today, a bit more complex, so let's just turn off all of these adjustments and go through the process step by step. Now today I am grading with DaVinci Resolve, but since the techniques that I'm showing here are pretty universal, you'll be able to follow along with all the steps using software like Premiere or Final Cut, just the buttons are in different places. So the first thing I do with any shot is add some contrast so we can see what we're working with. At this stage, I'm looking at the overall image and I'm not actually worried about those bright spots that have now clipped over the top of the waveform. We can deal with that later. To counter the backlighting, let's use a separate node to add a pretty strong vignette that darkens the edges of the frame without affecting our runner in the center. So here's the original footage compared to our grade so far. Now at this point, I may as well add my edge blur, just slightly blurring the corners of the frame. And I'll add some film grain too. Both of these are just effects that I use on pretty much all of my digital footage these days, so that it doesn't look too pristine. Now looking back at my 2014 grade, I can see that the colours are generally quite desaturated, except for that red jacket. I'm pretty sure what happened here is that I increased the saturation, but then I stopped when I realised that the red tones in the jacket were getting too intense. But with colour grading, we've always got to consider the story behind the shot. And so with this footage, it was supposed to convey the freedom of running. That's where I had the camera moving to follow the energy. And so really I think those greens need a little bit more colour and life to fit with the scene. So jumping back to today's grade, I'm going to start by using the luma versus saturation curves to add some saturation to just the darkest parts of the image. But already I can see that jacket is getting really red, so I'll need to fix that later. On a separate node, I'm going to use the hue versus saturation curves to grab just the green tones and boost up the saturation without affecting the rest of the image. And finally, I'll use the qualifier to select just that red jacket by itself. Once I've made sure I've got the red selected throughout that whole clip, I can reduce the saturation on this node and it'll just take the edge off that red jacket. And you know, while we're here, I'm going to warm up this whole shot since we can see that the sun is low in the sky and we're supposed to be showing that magical feeling of going on a good run. So jumping back to my 2014 grade, I'm always distracted by those highlights. The way it goes from a grey tone straight up to a full white without anything in between looks totally unnatural, but this is something that happens pretty often when you're using cheaper cameras. So let's see if we can fix this with my new techniques. I'll start by using the log wheels, which can be confusing, so I'll give just a quick demo. Before I was using the main colour wheels, but by switching to log mode that lets you really target just a specific area of the image. Basically, I can adjust only the brightest highlights of the image, which looks terrible if you bring them down too low. But if we just use it a little bit, we can recover a lot of that detail from the highlights without making the whole image dark. So continuing with today's grade, you can see how I've added a log adjustment in this node, just to recover a little bit of my highlights. So now let's try and figure out that highlight roll off. When you shoot on film, there's a lovely kind of bloom effect around the highlights, which kind of looks like this. Here I've simulated the highlight bloom with a simple glow effect. But when you use a glow effect, it also tends to brighten the highlights, which is often the last thing we want to do at this stage. So let's add a layer node. Now this is another one of Resolve's slightly confusing features. Layer nodes are a bit like a mask or a mat, but upside down. Basically you have to imagine that when you first add a layer node, it kind of overrides and blocks the node you've just been working on and then you can cut out certain parts of the layer node to reveal the original node above it. 
It sounds complicated, but once you get used to it, it's fine. In this case, I just want that node with the glow effect to leave my highlights alone. So I'll use the layer node to temporarily remove the effect and then qualify by luminance so that the layer node doesn't block the darker parts of the node above it. Now you can see when I toggle the bloom node, our highlights stay the same, but the shadows have that glow effect applied. And so that's all I'm doing with this footage is adding the glow effect on top, which clips the highlight and then adding a layer node, which cuts through to reveal the original highlights. Here's what the bloom effect looks like on and off. Now this next node I've labeled as haze and it's very similar, just using another glow effect that's more spread out and subtle, which gives this kind of hazy atmosphere. And just like with the previous one, I'll need to make sure my highlights don't get blown out so I can quickly copy and paste that same layer node to fix the highlights again. And so on our original footage, here's what the haze effect looks like on and off. And finally, in a node at the end, I'll qualify to include just that area where I want the highlights to be smoother. And then I'm gonna boost the shadows all the way up, reducing the contrast a whole bunch, but just in that specific area. I wouldn't always go this far with it. Often I'd just boost the shadows a little bit, but here I think the full effect really helps to give the impression of a smoother highlight roll off. And so there's our shot. We've gone from these dark and dreary tones to balancing the colors, warming it up, fixing, blooming, hazing, and reducing the contrast in those highlights. The second shot is from a short film I made in 2013, where we were fortunate enough to film at this location for free. I seem to remember I was riding a skateboard while filming this one, although the movement clearly didn't turn out as smooth as I'd hoped. So for today's grade, I've copied over my typical node structure from the previous shot, but I'm turning most of it off so we can go through each node individually. The first thing to look at is the contrast. By just dropping the shadows and mids, boosting the highlights and adding a vignette, it's now looking much more punchy than before. So in this case, we're grading what was attempting to be an energetic action film, so the punchy colors can hopefully help bring out some of that intensity. Now, since I didn't set my camera's white balance correctly, everything's looking a little warm. I'll correct this with the temperature slider and then push it a little bit further into the cool tones to give it that kind of fluorescent industrial look since that matches the kind of lights that were there on location. Then I'm gonna add a slight tint of red so our skin tones look more natural. My next step is to use the log wheels to just tweak the brightest and darkest areas of the image so we can retain a little more detail without impacting the overall brightness of the shot. We'll then add the bloom node, which gives that glowing look. And finally, we'll fix those highlights by isolating the brightest parts of the image before reducing their saturation and cooling them off until they're neutral on the vector scope. So here's the 2013 grade, which is looking quite muddy and amateurish. And now here's where my color grading style is at at the moment. To me, it makes a lot more sense. It's punchier and has richer tones. Okay, so for the last shot with this one, to my eye, this is just looking a bit too dark and a bit too red. My guess is that it's like this because my computer screen brightness was set too low while I was grading. And that's why it's always good to take a step back from the screen or even to get a second opinion while you're working since the human eye is constantly adjusting to the changes in light around it. Now in fashion videos, the clothes are obviously pretty important, but here we can see them blending into the background. So let's see what we can do about that. I'll start with a quick grade, just brightening up the image while looking at the scopes, and then I'll copy over my bloom and haze nodes from the previous shots, pretty standard stuff. Now to separate the two shades of green, I'm just gonna use the hue versus hue to pick out those green leaves. We could of course change the color completely if we needed to, but I'm just gonna push the leaves a little warmer so we can keep it subtle. Finally, I can do a very similar trick with the hue versus saturation to adjust the saturation of just that same area without affecting the green clothing too much. And there we go, before and after. I think it's got a little more separation and it's a lot more neutral, as far as I can see at least. So I have to say, digging up these old files has been a bit of an experience. It's always a bit cringy to look back at an old piece of work and see all of the obvious flaws and the things I just didn't think about. But so much of color grading is problem solving. And so by reworking these shots, I can get a good measure of what I've learned recently and how my color grading style has developed which is kind of encouraging. I guess I should probably save these files so that I can come back and re-recolor grade these after another seven years. And you know, I actually hope that I do cringe when I see these shots seven years from now, because that'll show that I'm still learning. So thanks to LG for setting me up with this monitor. There's a link in the description if you'd like to find out more about it. But otherwise, my name's Simon Cade, this has been DSLR Guide, and I'll see you soon.